Water pressure gauges like this can tell you a lot about the condition of your water pump and filtration system. Things like if your filters are getting blocked up or if you've got a low pump pressure, maybe it's getting a little bit worn, or it can even point to problems that are much further down the line. And luckily enough, it is fairly easy to install. It is something that you guys can do at home with basic tools and hopefully a bit of guidance from this video. And in a previous video, I showed you how these gauges help you identify the potential problems that might be in and around your system by reading the various pressures on all of the gauges. And if you want to know more about that, I'll leave a link to that video in the description and also at the end of this video. So this is a 600 kilopascal pressure gauge and I picked it up at one of the local hardware stores. And it's got a 63 millimeter dial, so it's quite nice and large and it makes it easy to read. And it's got a quarter inch BSP thread. And for the position that this gauge is going to be installed, I'm also going to need a few other fittings. A 22 millimeter compression T fitting and a three quarter to one quarter inch reducing bush. And that is to connect the gauge into the T piece. So I'll start off by applying some PTFE tape around the reducing bush thread. And that's before actually installing it into the T fitting. And I'm doing this uh, to ensure that the fittings have a watertight seal once they are screwed together. You can also use pop dope if that's something that you've got on hand. Um, both of those will basically do the same job, but the PTFE tape is what I've got on hand today, so that's what I'm gonna use. And normally, just a couple of turns around the thread is gonna be good enough uh, for a good seal. I'll also do the same for the pressure gauge, wrapping a couple of turns of tape around the threads and then screwing it into the T-fitting. Now I'm not sure if you noticed, but I did put quite a lot more winds on the threads of the pressure gauge itself. And the reason for that is because the thread on the pressure gauge is not a tapered thread, it's actually a parallel thread, even though the box said it was a BSPT, which is for tapered thread. Um, but what happens sometimes is if you've got a parallel thread and you screw your gauge, in this case, all the way in, eventually when it bottoms out, the gauge dial might not be facing the correct direction. So you kind of have to back it off a little bit. So what I went and did here is I put some extra PTFE tape on and um, it, it makes sure that it's quite a tight, like quite a strong friction fit as you are screwing in um, the thread or the gauge. And then you don't have to screw it all the way to bottoming out, you screw it most of the way in, and then you just stop turning uh, once the day once the gauge's dial is facing the correct direction, and that normally will work just fine. This is where I plan to install that first pressure gauge on the outlet side of the pressure pump, basically between the pump controller and the ball valve that feeds up to the first stage of filters. And I want to install it here so that I can monitor the pressure that the pump is putting out. Now, most of the times, the pump controller does come with a pressure gauge kind of pre-installed on the side of the pump controller. Um, but these are generally very small and I would like all of my gauges to look the same and I also want them to indicate an accurate reference pressure relative to each other so that I can see exactly what is happening across the entire system. So I'll go ahead and remove the existing ball valve and a section of pipe and start piecing this whole lot together to see how it's gonna fit. And it looks like it is going to be a pretty tight fit. Now, of course, your arrangement of pipes and valves may vary, so you may end up needing to cut out a section of your existing pipe to fit in the pressure gauge. To cut the sections of pipe, I'm using this little round pipe cutter. This one is specifically made by Rothenberger. I think it's called a Rolls, Rolo Slice or something like that, pipe cutter. Um, I've been using it for a while and it actually seems to work really well. And I can get into some really tight places with this little uh, pipe cutter. Now, I'm sure there are many of these on the market. There's going to be many different brands. They probably all basically do the same thing. So I guess just get whichever one that you can get your hands on wherever you are in the world. I'll also see though if I can find uh, some links, basically Amazon links, and if I can, I'll leave them in the description if you want to pick up um, a few of the tools that I'm using in today's video. And it also goes a long way to supporting the channel. And I want to say thank you very much to everybody that has used the links in the past and hopefully you guys will continue to support the channel thank you guys very much very much appreciated so i'll also loosely piece the ball valve and the gauge together and see if it's going to fit in position and also if the valve handle is going to open without interfering with the gauge itself because these are fitted so close together now of course you might also have to play around with your arrangement and see what works best for you
I'll then go ahead and clean up the pipe with a bit of scotch brite before sliding on the nut and the compression ring and then I'll loosely fit up the gauge so that I can measure how much pipe needs to be cut off the other end. And you'll see I'm actually marking it here with a utility knife. It's because I didn't have a pencil on hand. Not too sure why. I think I must have forgotten it in the workshop or something. This time around the pipe cutter didn't end up fitting so I had to remove the piece of pipe in order to get it cut. Now a quick tip when using these wheel type pipe cutters is that once the pipe is cut it kind of leaves a slightly rolled down edge and you want to remove this rolled down edge so that it doesn't cause a turbulent water flow as the water flows through the piece of pipe and this can be removed by either just filing it down carefully or shaving it away. In this case you can see I use the utility knife blade to shave down that rolled edge. You've got to be kind of careful if you do this though. Now some pipe cutters like this Kennedy one uh, have a triangular prong. You kind of stick it into the pipe and you turn it and it shaves down the rolled edge. But also just using a standard round file works absolutely fine. So now that all the pieces are cut to length, I'll fit everything together and tighten up all the fittings. You'll see the last piece of pipe is really short. Too short in fact, but that's the space I had to work with, so that's how I'm going to roll this time around. Now preferably you want enough pipe between the nuts so that each nut can be loosened and backed off without interfering with the other nuts. Now that everything's tightened up, I'll go ahead and check for leaks. And thankfully, there aren't any. If you are finding the video useful so far, please give it a like and leave us a comment. Tell us about your rainwater harvesting and filtration system. And please share with us whatever tips and tricks you may have learned over time. You never know, these may end up helping somebody else. And it is always, always great to hear from you. And now the last thing to do here is to cut off the top of the expansion relief seal on top of the gauge. Why? Well, because the sticker says so. So this is the first pressure gauge in the system, but I also installed another two gauges, one on the outlet side of the sediment filters and another one on the outlet side of the carbon filters. And earlier I mentioned that there may be additional fittings that are needed depending on where the gauges are going to be installed. And you can see here an additional pipe nipple and a 90 degree bend or elbow are needed to mount the gauges so that they are upright. Now you'll also probably see that these gauges are a little bit low on glycerine, they kind of are only half full and that's because Previously, when I'd mounted them, I mounted them sideways with the expansion relief seal cut off. So, of course, half of the glycerine ran out. It's not a big deal here, but it is something that you might want to keep in mind when you are installing your gauges. So, how do these water pressure gauges help you identify problems in and around your system? Well, if you want to know more about that, you can go ahead and watch this video right here where I explain it all. Otherwise, if you generally want to know more about rainwater harvesting and backup water tank systems, go ahead and check out the full playlist of all of the videos right here. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.